Good morning. morning. Welcome. Seems like we've got a small crowd. Without any Haver camps, we are a small crowd, aren't we? (laughs) Um, This morning, our uh, guest speaker, who's not here yet, um, is Father Bill Gahagan. He is retired uh, from several of the Catholic churches in the area. Um, His last retirement, I understand, was last July but he still says mass at St. Jude's Church in Helenwood, which is in Scott County on Saturday evenings, and he fills in um, at other churches that need him. He um, has started the Crazy Quilt Friendship Center in Newcomb, Tennessee. He's worked with Catholic Charities in Columbus Home. He's been a priest for 44 years He's been in the Air Force and the Navy, and he lives here in Norris, but he fills in where he's needed, and if he doesn't show, we're going to have a very short service today. (laughs) Uh, Some other announcements. Um, The Sunday School Project, those of you who were here last Sunday, um, Sunday School is working on a mission project in caring for others and we're taking on the Heifer Project. Uh, There's a display out in the Narthex um, with a catalog, and also if you did not get a can uh, to fill with change last Sunday, there are some more out there, and we ask you to bring those back next week if you didn't bring them this week. Um, The Women's Study Group meets tomorrow evening at my house. And the prayer shawl ministry meets Thursday evening at Fran Wilkes' house. Um, Saturday, there will be a pottery day here at the church. York is going to uh, make some things for fairy gardens and teaching children. And he says anybody under 99 is welcome to come. Um, That's in your bulletin. And I hope to see people. These are for the... um, plant sale this spring at the church. Um, Keith has asked that we add Susan to the prayer list. I'm not sure whether he meant me because I need (laughs) prayers this morning. I don't think it is. I think it's another Susan, but I'm not sure who it is. (laughs) We're pleased to have the Dulcimer group here today bringing us the special music while Tracy's away. And while Tracy's away, you all are going to be our choir. (laughs) You're going to be the angel band. Uh, Turn to page 55. Page 55. To God be the glory. We're going to sing the chorus two times. I figure it'll take, take one verse to get everybody woke up. So we're going to sing it twice. Page 55. Please stand. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Give him the glory, great things he Now stay standing. We're going to do hymn number 24, Vast the Immensity, all four verses. Page 24. <laughs> Thank you. 
If you'll join me in the call to worship, if you will, you can keep the commandments, and to act faithfully is a matter of your own choice. Lead us Christ before you, fire and water. Stretch out your hands over whichever you wish. Before a man are life and death, and whichever he chooses will be given to him. His eyes are on those who fear him, and he knows every deed of man. He has not commanded anyone to be ungodly, and he has not given anyone permission to be seated. One thing I didn't mention, and I want to thank Steve Bohannon for leading the music, which I just absolutely cannot do, and for doing the children's story today. Uh, this New Testament scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature and not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us in his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Please stay seated. We're going to sing uh, for the gift of God the spirit, number 339. We'll do all four verses.
sunshine's dawning wakes to life the sacred word still across our nature's darkness moves to wake our souls from this sleep moves to stir Himself, the living author wakes to life the sacred word weaves with us its holy pages and reveals our risen Lord. He it is who works within. Let us pray. Dear God, as we search for your wisdom, we ask that you hear our individual thoughts and needs as we pray silently. Now let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I did recognize that angel band, made famous by Ralph Stanley, I believe. One of my favorites, and Liza Jane's favorites. I saw you singing. <laughs> I'd like to invite the children to come down. Are there any kids here today besides the... Yeah, cool. Great. We do miss the Haver camps, don't we? But we still got <laughs> we still got plenty of kids. This is great. This is great. Thank you all for coming down. I got a, I got something to show you. What what do you see? A house? Yeah. A barn. I think it's a barn, but but what's on the ground? Looks like snow to me. Y'all tired of snow? Are you enjoying it? <laughs> That's what I expected. We as adults forget to enjoy the snow sometimes. Uh, we have to get out and clean our cars off. But I did have a fun moment. I took my dogs out in the snow and watched them play in the snow. So that was fun. I did have a little bit of fun with it. Um, this is a, I guess I'd call it folk art. This was drawn, painted by Grace Foster. A lot of the adults know who Grace Foster was. She's, she's one of our oldest uh, members. It goes way back in the church. She, she had a big interest in nature. One of the things I remember about Grace, she could always tell you about if you saw a plant, she'd say, that's a whatever, what kind of plant it was, and she had a great interest in nature. She's also the founder of the uh, craft center down here on the highway, the, uh, the Appalachian craft, craft Center. But I, I think about her and I think about nature. This sits on my mantle during the winter time. But I'm kind of, I think along with some adults, ready for something else. Uh, although it's been fun, uh, I'm ready for spring. So what, what happens when, when spring comes? It gets warmer outside. Yeah. What else? Well, trees start budding, don't they? Yeah, trees start budding. To me, this is one of God's miracles. You know, the, 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 the snow waters the plants, the bulbs that have been soaking up energy all, all during the year sprout. One of the first plants up, at least living here in East Tennessee, people, we plant daffodils. Uh, I think my granny called them jonquils, but I think I call them daffodils. Or I, I think as a kid, I called them Easter flowers because they'd come up in March around Easter. Uh, but I think that's an amazing thing. So I'd like to invite you to start looking. You may even see them poke up out of the snow. I've seen these things poke up out of the snow uh, and, and let you know, hey, spring's coming. As we say in Appalachia, springs are coming. I've got a little, I've got a little prayer for you. Would, you. would you bow your head and repeat after me? This is a prayer to God. Dear God, thank you for ladies like Greg Foster, Grace Foster, yeah, who teach us about spring and new beginnings and leave us with beautiful pictures so we can always remember God's gift of all the seasons. Amen. Would you like to, would you like to use that pulpit over there? We're so pleased to have Father Bill here this morning. I've told all the dirty stories I know about you, so <laughs> <laughs> you weren't here to refute that, so... <laughs> Let us pray. 
Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to praise you and thank you for the many blessings we have received this week. We have seen your glory in the large snowfall we received. We thank you for bringing us back together safely. We ask you to comfort those who need comforting, feed those who are hungry, clothe the naked, and bless us all. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you want to read the gospel or do you want me to? You will? Yeah. Okay. What must you want? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what about the other two readings? Are you going to do that, Sarah and Paul? We've already done those. Oh, you got to <laughs> First of all, before I begin, I just want to thank Reverend Keith and thank all of you for the opportunity to be together. My brothers and sisters and the Lord, it's just great to be here with you. It took me 45 years to get here. So <laughs> we made it. <laughs> uh, the text we've chosen this week, of course, is from the, the art of liturgy that's used throughout major denominations. And so the gospel I'd like to share with you is that from Matthew. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, do not think that I've come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. I say to you until heaven and earth pass away. Not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of these least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You've heard it, that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother Raka will be answerable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever says you fool will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring a gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. <clears throat> Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the God, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. And you've heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her her bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you've heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by a head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. But your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These three readings this week can uh, give us a sense of a Jewish audience for sure that Matthew was addressing. And in the fifth chapter of Matthew, this follows the Sermon on the Mount, which Jesus speaks to the people of the blessedness of the gifts that he gives to them because of his love for them. And then we hear that Jesus goes a little further in speaking to a Jesus audience. Yes, he was reminding them he upholds the law, the Ten Commandments, 
But now there's something special that he wants to give to them, but to us today, even in the 21st century. And I think that is the sense of our relationship with God through his son, Jesus. An opportunity, a relationship of true friendship, of intimacy, a, a sense of community, a sense of being gifted by the power of God's love that lives in us through his son, Jesus. And also for us to recognize that, to try to be Jesus Christ in the 21st century of today, which we say by ourselves, forget it, it's just not going to happen. Huh? What is it that Jesus holds up for us as Matthew reflects for us? Huh? Jesus looks at the integrity of the human person. Yes, he quotes the Our Law, but he says, I say to you something more than just killing your brother or sister. The fact if you just think about it, you've done it. And that sort of rattles our, I mean, our thoughts now. And what do you mean? I haven't, I haven't killed him. I, I mean, thought about it maybe, but I haven't killed him. It's because we are not daring to see the sacredness of another human person to see God's presence in that person. And at that moment of anger, of course, it's very difficult. As we all know, when you get angry, we get angry. And so we do a lot of crazy things. And the same thing with the other, the instances that Jesus uses about adultery. You look with lust, you've already committed that sin. Why? Because you were looking at that woman as an object. Or the other way around, a woman's looking at that man as an object. And we're seeking only our self-gratification. We are not there to see the integrity and the love and the sacredness in that person. To see that person who is made in God's image and likeness, that, is very, that person is very special to God. It needs to be very special to us. <clears throat> and in the day of which we're living today, where individuality, I guess that's the word, individualism is so powerful today, huh? kind of a me, myself, and I, and I'm not here to judge or criticize it in the sense of, making a judgment because that's what the scribes and Pharisees did in the first readings that you remember. They thought they were so righteous because they knew the law. They knew the letter of the law, but they didn't know the love. They didn't know the love at that time. They did not know that sense of God's mercy and compassion and forgiveness. You know, Jesus himself broke the law, if you we remember many times, didn't he? Meeting a woman at the well, Jacob's well. And he has the conversation, it was a Samaritan woman, I'm sorry, at Jacob's well. He starts a conversation with her. Ends up really helping her to identify, you know, she's not married, but she's been living with five men. And when he asked to go uh, bring you, well, he's her husband, and she said. So Jesus was, was breaking the law by going speaking first to a Samaritan woman, and second, you know, speaking to her about what? Helping her to gain a sense of her self-love and respect and integrity, that she's not to allow herself to be used as an object of another's failure. Huh? And that, that's very challenging, I think, for us today. It's always been challenging throughout salvation history, as we know. How do we do this? Well, uh, temptation is real, and uh, there used to be a program way back in the 70s, the devil made me do it. I can't think of the name of the program, but we always relate, the devil made me do it, you know. Well, probably that has a, an essence to its truth, but uh, what, what makes us do things is a sense of our own sense of do we dare to love Christ back? Paul tells us a mature Christian, uh, a mature Christian is when we grow in the sense of allowing God to love us and to be present with us and to see it in spite of, even in ourselves, in spite of our brokenness, that is being very vulnerable to openness to what's going to come from that love affair. Huh? And so when you and I enter into that realm of seeking to try to be Christ-like, Paul says, ear is not heard, I has not seen those that enter the human heart but God has prepared for those who what? Who love him, who love him. Huh? Yeah, we go far beyond the law and the prophets this morning and the readings of this week. Huh? But even more so, we go far as we take it into our workplaces, at school, uh, if we're retired, or our places of work. How do we dare to allow ourselves to be vulnerable with the love of God to another human person? especially those challenging us to love them. It's easy to love those who love us, as we know. We've heard that said many times. Huh? And by the way, I'm mentioning of this whole sense of love. You know, love can be a form of possession also. That's not Christ's love. Love is sacrificial, as Jesus knows. He gave it to us on the cross on Calvary. That's the whole sign of Calvary, love, sacrifice. 
in order that we have resurrection, in order that we have the gift of salvation. But true love is a sense of sacrifice, of the giving of self to care for the other. And when you and I do that, then the gift comes back to us, unbeknownst to us, because it is the presence of Christ that we are sharing back and forth in that sense of relationship here. So I just share with you uh, the readings this weekend. Um, sometimes we Catholics, we're allowed 10 minutes to preach, you know, and if we go over that, the, the, the delays we have us hang hung at the throat, but no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, I did not, I just wanted to belate it, but I did just uh, want to share with you as I share myself. Uh, we seek to be mature Christians, which means we rely on Christ, rely on the Holy Spirit. As Paul says, the Spirit scrutinizes everything. The Spirit is with us in every thought, word, deed, and action, and it's founded on love. It's not founded on fear. It's not founded on God just waiting for us to, to make a mistake, but rather he's waiting for us to make a mistake of daring to love him as the Son loved the Father and as the Son loves us and as we are called to love one another. May God bless all of us. Please stand, we'll sing our final hymn, um, number 688, Have That Own Way, Lord. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Christ be your shalom. Christ be your